All right, found a sapling here, maybe about one inch in diameter at the, the base. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and it's already leaning this direction, so I'm gonna try to cut with my left hand. Again, this is the Park River Sahara. Oops, it's already cracked. But, gets through it no problem at all. I was left-handed on that one, but it's still about an inch thick. This did a good job, especially for a blade with a lot thicker geometry to it, uh, pushing right through it. Uh, you know, it did really good. Uh, something like the Mora Black or uh, the Fox River uh, is going to be a little bit better at it because um, they're so sharp and thin, they just wedge right in there quickly. But the, the Sarahara did a, a good job, and you know, if it doesn't get through, you could always... Uh, you know, chop into it no problem. So, this is a good straight sapling, uh, not too big around. Take this back into camp and uh, again try to mix some candles with it. See how it handles batoning. I'm I'm suspecting it's going to do a very very good job uh, because it's got kind of the heft going for it of the Bravo One and the length of the Aurora. So, I think it's going to do a really good job with batoning. But we'll see how it goes. Again, using this uh, wood that we've uh, cut up earlier. Trying to remove this wet outer bark here. I don't want it to slow the fire up at all. Uh, so far, an outstandingly sharp knife for, for this blade geometry. I, I've messed with this in the backyard some, doing feather sticking and, and maybe once or twice batoning something very, very mild just to get a feel for how it handles. Um, and the only thing I've done is strop this, um, strop it back up on, you know, black and white Bark River compound. That's it. Uh, nothing, <clears throat> nothing major. No reprofiling or anything. The A2 comes with a outstanding geometry, but it does, in my opinion, perform better. It's getting into this pretty good. This bow has got a lot of spring to it, but. I can keep the the back of the blade tied up against it, it'll cut it. And again, that's that sharpness coming into play there. <clears throat> but yeah, all I've done is strop it, and, and I feel that it does perform better after stropping. Um, but yeah, outstanding, outstanding blade so far. It is really on the heavy side. Uh, I noticed it carrying it on my hip a little bit more than I do some of the other Bark Rivers. Um, but, you know, you're, that's kind of what you're paying for. You're paying for that heft. I've said it in other videos, kind of like a marriage between a Bravo 1 and an Aurora. Not necessarily a bad thing if you've used either one of those.
this. Not bad. See what I'm gonna do. This one right here is a pretty stout piece with this split at the back, which is usually a pretty tough place to baton. So take this heavy piece. And see how it handles. Not bad at all. Very tough blade. Again, I've, I've had very good luck with the Bark River knives. Uh, the only one so far that I've had that I didn't really, <clears throat> wasn't really my speed, was the Canadian Special. Not because the blade performance wasn't awesome on it, it was. I just, the finger grooves for me weren't overly comfortable is all. It's a personal thing. But uh, every other knife I've had uh, been outstanding. Uh, the Aurora, one of my favorites. Uh, the Bravo One's outstanding. The Gunny was also very good. The Bushcrafter is... I actually was surprised about how good that one was, given the geometry on it, but it was awesome. Uh, Canadian Special, again, good. Didn't care as much for the finger grooves on it. I've had the Aurora twice. Fox River so far has been... Very, very good. And you can see this is a thick knife. And you, the outer part is, is somewhat wet, but it is doing a great job of removing it. Going through a knot. Let's see here. But it's not there at the end. It's still fractured off. So, very, very good knife. If you're looking for a heavier duty knife, uh, in general, especially if you're a Park River fan, so far, this is a very, very good knife. Alright, so there's the Bark River Sahara. Um, very, very cool blade so far. Uh, edge appears to be holding up very well on it. I don't even bring sharpeners or, or strappers out when I'm testing knives anymore because I want to see how they hold up. And I'm going to run this back to camp and see what we've got up next. Alright, so I wanted to do one more batoning test. Um, really, really test these knives and and see how well they would do. This is some of that Sparkleberry um, that uh, burns well even if it's somewhat damp. Um, it dries relatively quickly. Uh, it's one of the, the best woods I've found to look for when trying to get a campfire going, but when it gets really thick like this, it's, I mean, it's really dense. Um, we uh, broke this up with a hatchet earlier and it took quite some time, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go with the grain obviously, but I want to see how well uh, the knives will baton through something um, that's quite a bit tougher than the wood I had earlier, which I think is either beech or maple. Um, I didn't get to see the leaves on the tree because it was already down. So, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, you can see it's stuck in there pretty good. This is a very, very dense wood. I'm doing this, the knife's going into the tree a little bit, but I'm doing it to try to get the knife back out of it. So. That's an incredibly tough piece of wood. Um, I had to really knock the knife around to get it through it. it it's incredibly dense. But I don't feel any major imperfections. I don't see any dings. Uh, I will not be surprised if, if there are a few little maybe micro rolls or something from a chore that tough. Uh, again, not something I would normally subject to one of my knives, um, but I wanted to see how it would handle. Yeah, I'll take it back through a piece now that it's done the grunt work and split it. Go this direction with it. Yeah, you can see these cuts are a little bit, a little bit easier, <laughs> a lot bit easier. But when I first started it, I didn't know if it was going to make it through or not. Uh, the knife got jammed in there pretty good. I had to knock it all kinds of ways around to get it uh, to uh, split, but it did it. So um, the Sahara so far has, has been an outstanding knife. I can tell you from the field use I've had so far, not quite as good at the delicate work as a thinner blade knife, but you kind of would expect that. It's very, very heavy. Um, I am finding this black micarta to be a little bit slick in this cold weather, even without that thumb groove on my on my clothing. Um, it's still a little bit thick. Um, if I want to go with the Sahara long term, I'll probably order another one if I can get it in a, um, in a hardwood, uh, maybe something like a desert ironwood, which I particularly like. but. Uh, splitting power is really good. Edge retention so far, the A2 has been extremely good. Uh, batoned a lot of wood off and on camera. <clears throat> uh, you know, cutting open camp bags and things like that is no problem. Um, I mean, it's it's a really good knife. It is is very much on the heavy end, but I, I do like it a lot. So we're going to continue to test it and uh, see how it goes. This is some of the uh, sapling that I took down earlier. And basically what I want to do now is I want to kind of uh, basically baton straight through it here and then work on making a split for some candles I'm going to run in camp tonight and then uh, see how that goes. So I'm just going to remove some of the nodules here, make it a little bit flusher. section right there. I think I'll go here. Find something here that may work. Use this one in a minute. Fairly nice job there. a little bit 
sticker. Typical fruit. There we go. In my experience, um, thicker blades have a little bit harder problem doing this with any finesse because they they start to really want to split the wood more than just slice it. So far, things look okay. I uh, basically, before I left, I uh, went in the kitchen and basically set up something like a double boiler and melted down a citronella candle. Now, we don't have a problem with insects this time of year, as it's nighttime, it's in the mid to upper 20s. But I um, wanted to test to see how it would go anyway. I figured something that could be used as a helpful fire starter if it's wet, um, work as a camp candle, and deter bugs when the season's right would be something fun to test out. So uh, we'll see how that goes in camp tonight. But I've gone ahead and split this using the, the thicker Sahara. It, it actually did a very good job. It didn't uh, go through the wood quite as well as I thought to, but something that has to do with the reverb that I'm getting from this really wet stump. Um, it's kind of springing uh, the sapling and the knife back up, but it still did a fairly good job. And now I'm gonna go ahead and, and put a wedge in there and see how it'll handle. go too far down because I don't want it to split. Sorry this is a little bit out of the frame. I was planning on doing this back at camp. All I'm doing there is using the knife that created the wedge to start to, to reinsert into the split so I can get the wood in there. Then I'm going to slide the knife out. So gives me a Decent split. Hopefully you can see that right there. And uh, we'll see how that goes tonight. You can see it's uh, been taking quite a beating today. But this is some of that wood uh, split earlier, and I'm uh, just going to see how it feathers six now. So I'm getting some good long ribbons, but this curve right here isn't agreeing with what I'm doing. So this curve goes this way, but maybe I'll get a flatter approach on the top.
so you can see pretty good ribbons so was working on the Fox River on this one again check the other video for that but um, the back of this piece of wood right here is a little bit drier so I'm going to take the Sahara on that and, and kind of try to do it some more justice to show you it's still very very sharp um, even though it's been <clears throat> beat half to death again and I was doing some stuff off video all the batoning that, that I've done this trip and all the feather sticking and, and things like that that I've done, I, I've not obviously put on video. Videos have a tendency to run long anyway, but you can see, <clears throat> try to get a little bit closer if it'll, if it'll focus, that it's throwing some very fine curls there. That was a little bit deep. But... Anyway, great fine work for a really big knife. All right, guys, back inside now, and as usual, for the first phase of uh, looking at edge retention and uh, you know steel imperfections, all I've done is clean the sap and the residue off the knife so that when I look at it, uh, run along my fingernail, do some paper cut testing, um, I'm getting just the imperfections, if any, that exist within the steel. Looking at this, this knife, it held up brilliantly after three days of moderate to, to semi-heavy use. Uh, it was very cold. The um, temperatures dipped down in the upper 20s. I think one night we were down about 26, 27, which is below freezing, so it's cold. And the notes I have with regard to that are, it performed outstanding with regard to batoning. I batoned quite a bit of wood uh, to help get the fire going. After it was good and hot, no problems with throwing larger logs on, but did have the opportunity to, to put this uh, through its paces. The one thing I can tell you, uh, and it's, it's, this is not anything that's earth shattering or, or groundbreaking at all, is that the micarta, this black canvas, material does get cold in colder weather uh, more so than some other materials and since tin the skin typically uh, tightens up it starts to dry out uh, maybe even crack and get chipped in colder weather it feels very slick when in use and a curvier handle like this remember this is slightly a smaller aurora-esque style handle i talked about that more um, in my original comments on this knife in another, another video. Because it's a little bit less locking than say a Bravo 1, it does feel a little bit slipperier. Um, but sanding this up, running some Dremel lines along there, making your own type of abrasive surface will improve it greatly. If I could go back and reorder this, um, I would probably go ahead and get this in a wood, something like a desert ironwood. My experience has been that almost every handle I've ever had from uh, Bark River has been somewhat slick, but of all the handle materials, the Desert Ironwood's my favorite. And it doesn't feel quite as slippery as some of the other ones. Uh, again, very subjective, but something to take note of. Overall, especially in warm to moderate temperatures like this, it's a very, very comfortable handle and a little bit more nimble, in my opinion, than the Bravo One handle. Um, on days where it's in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, or warmer, you know, I could spit on my hand like that and get very good traction with it, and I don't have any complaints at all. But if you're a cold weather user or cold environments or are a fairly healthy percentage of the amount of times you would spend outdoors, then just really think about your handle materials. For colder weather, for more of a locking feeling, I still prefer the Bravo One handle, but for, you know, mild conditions and stuff, this, this is a great handle because, like I said, it's, it's more comfortable um, it's, it feels more at home in the hand, it just feels more ergonomic, and it's, it's easier to manipulate, um, in my opinion, than the Bravo handle. But again, colder weather, it does feel a little bit slicker, so something to take note of. The edge looks great, considering the amount of wood that I baton with this. Uh, the density of, of the wood I baton, you can see in the test, uh, where I was going through a very, very, very dense piece of that sparkleberry, 
I didn't think it was going to make it through. I thought it was going to be after something I would just cut from the video. I, I was really contemplating if, if I was even going to attempt it because even hitting with a hatchet took a long time. And I was like, man, this I don't want to deruin my blades, but I want to see what it'll do. And I had to beat the snot out of it, but it did get through that thing, and it still looks great. Uh, the edge holds up very much like the Bravo 1 did for me. The length is a huge bonus in batoni. The, the taper of the geometry, as I suspected in, in my uh, initial video, uh, was very helpful in doing some of the finer work, some of the feather sticking, notching, uh, that sort of thing. If finer work is your preference, this is not a knife I would recommend at all. It's simply too heavy and too thick a blade if, if you're really into the finer bushcraft stuff. But if you're wanting something on par with like maybe a laser strike, an SE4, not quite as brutally thick as an SE5, but you know, you're in the heavier meteor range there and you like Bark, Bark River want to give it a try and you've been maybe teetering on the Bravo, maybe look at this one. It's a very good knife. I'm, I'm not going to lie. A little heavy for me, but a really cool blade. So I'm going to see how it held up now. My thinks are going to, my thinking on this is going to be, haven't really tried it yet. Still feels, feels really sharp considering the amount of uh, use it had. Probably be a little bit hairy, maybe some stuff up around the belly where the metal's thinner, but I, I suspect it, it did, did or will do very well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, no problems uh, at all. A little bit hairy. I do feel a, a little bit of a snag, again, up toward the belly line here. Um, it's not scary sharp, but I still wouldn't want it, you know, getting my fingertip at all or anything as I've done in a previous video where I had the knife sitting up the baton and, and accidentally brought my hand up too close to the tip of the knife just at this speed, and it's slicing it open. This would do that. Um, but the reason I'm not surprised by how this held up is there's so much steel behind that convex. It's a very stout knife and it's got a very thick grind and it gets sharp. Don't, don't get me wrong. It actually feels a lot like the Bravo, but I don't know. It's just so different yet so similar because there's so much meat behind it. I just knew that this would hold up really well in the long term. Very cool knife. Again, take it uh, for what it's worth on how you kind of prefer your knives. I'm going to strop this bad boy up and we'll come back with a uh, last cut and thought section. All right, guys, going to do a quick wrap up of the Sahara review now. And what this portion is, is to talk about edge retention. It did a great job and restoring uh, any edge imperfections was very easy. Basically, seven, eight minutes on the black compound, two, three minutes on the white compound, and you're good to go. I did it a little bit extra because I wanted to get it even sharper than it was when I took it in the field. And the thicker uh, geometry knives in A2 even sometimes require a little bit more time on the, the stropping uh, versus something that's got a thinner profile. So no harm, no foul there. Again, a great, great knife. Uh, we'll take a look at some paper cutting now. Uh, I hit that one on the part of the knife that wasn't even a blade. So, uh, great job. Um, no issues for a big knife that, that cuts very, very well. Again, I highly recommend it uh, if you're using it for uh, survival, wilderness style um, use, this will probably be right at home in your kit. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it may be something to consider versus a Bravo 1.5 or if you like the Aurora looking for something heavier or you want something longer than um, the uh, original Bravo 1. This is something really well worth the time and money to consider. Uh, again, I'd probably prefer it in a wood, but it's a great knife. A little too heavy for me. I'm not into the huge beater choppers as much, but I really did want to try this knife out. It had me really curious. So there you go. Very good edge retention, very good performance, all except the most fine-tuned, um, you know, slicing and notching maybe would be the limit of it. It still did very good, just not as good as some others, but a very, very good compromise on a knife of this size. So if you've been looking at the Sahara and those meet your qualities, give it a try. Until next time, guys, be safe and God bless and happy holidays.